Welcome to the Texas Authors Institute TV show, produced by Beyond Bourgeois for the Texas Authors Institute of History, Incorporated, copyright 2024. If you would like to become a sponsor of our show and help us produce great content, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show as a Texas author, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com for more information. Music is Frolic of Words, created for Texas Authors Institute by Happy Fellows. Thank you for watching the Texas Authors Institute of History show with your hostess, Rox Berkey. Welcome to Texas Authors TV show. I'm Rox Berkey, and I'm here today to have a wonderful conversation. Connie, how are you? I'm good. I'm very well. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you as well. And so, you know, I, I kind of want to go into a couple of things um, talking about how you got into writing, how you got to this point, kind of, you know, bring people up to speed. So can you kind of give me the, I don't know, the Reader's Digest version? Sure. Um, basically, uh, I had always wanted to write a book and uh, I really pondered over what I could write about. And I never came to any conclusion other than saying, saying to myself that I might as well write about the thing that I know about, and that's me. Okay. And what I did was I based this novel on my life. And it is, it's a novel, it's not a memoir. So, um, and I, I just decided it'd be best to do that. So, because um, there were a lot of names involved and everything, and I just didn't want I didn't want to, to add those names to the book. I can understand that. I know actually uh, several other authors that, that want to change their story into a novel because it's easier to tell it that way. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And uh, being that it was based on my life, it was um, it was a little difficult to write at times as well because going through a lot of the things in my life that um, that trying to explain them, it brought up a lot of, um, I guess, um, emotions. So, but, but still is it being a, a, a novel? And during, uh, in the book also, also it kind of, there's things that I've had to add to the book to make it uh, a book worth reading. So I kind of veered a little bit off of my life just to kind of add things to make it work. You understand? I do. I do, Connie. And that's, I think that's a, a, you know, part of this is a really brave step for you to be able to share some of this information. And I totally appreciate um, that you wanted to even go down this path. So when you add elements to it to make it more, readable more digestible was there mm -hmm. a, a certain audience that you were trying to make sure you connected with in doing this um mostly just um dysfunctional families i guess possibly would be it um people that have, people that have lost uh family members uh and like in this case the book is one more dance with daddy and um uh i he walked, he went to work one day and never came home, never saw him again. So, uh, and that was very emotional as a child. Well, actually I was 21 at that time, but as a child, he was my rock. And um, it just, it crushed me and I never could find him, even though I tried. Well, you know, dads and daughters connect in a very different way than, than dad, uh, moms and daughters. I mean, it's just, it's, Mm -hmm. it's it's kind of been like all of those things so right uh, so your dad was in the service yes uh for about eight years and uh we we uh actually my life began in okinawa because oh, nice. uh, yeah so uh we went to okinawa he went there first and then my mother uh took my brother and i over on a two-week uh nasty army ship <laughs> <laughs> it won a cruise. Yeah, not, not it's not called the the Royal Caribbean kind of thing. No, no. Yet, yet. no. So that's really how my life began was in Okinawa, 
and um, and again, uh, uh, to tell you a little bit more, a little bit more about uh, my father is that he was not my biological father, and um, I didn't know that. I didn't know oh. it until I was twelve years old. Oh, and that was a shock. That was a big shock, also, to learn that my father was not my father. So, but he he ended up adopting my brother and I later on, and I. I never knew any other father than him. Well, I mean, the, this whole situation that you have gone through uh, in, in revealing this and sharing this with the world, actually. Yeah. Is it is it more for you or for you to help make people aware? I just, I'm, I'm curious. And I, I hope that's not yeah. too rude. Yeah. I've been asked that question, and I think it was probably more for me um, to just um, for a therapeutic reason, I guess, to get it off my chest and write it and and just let the story be told. Because there were a lot of things in there that I was always so embarrassed to even talk about. Um, there was my divorces, um, and I just never would talk about them, and I felt like you know, I just, I don't feel like I'm really me because I feel like I'm lying to people if I say something, you know, and I didn't because I was skirting around my life a lot. And um, so that was one thing. I just wanted to get it out and get it, get it clear for me as well. So that if anybody else read it that knew me, that they would know my story and not that I was, um, and I, th that way I didn't feel like I was a liar or somebody trying to skirt around something. No, again, I think this is very brave for you to get this out. And I'm 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 curious as to was there a specific event or factor that said, Constance, get this written. Get do no, it. Not really. No. Okay. Mm -mm. No, it just I just decided one day I was going to sit down and do it. Uh, I really kind of became semi-retired a couple of years ago, and that's when I had a little bit more time. And my husband and I travel, um, and so I would get in our motor coach. And, uh, we have a bus, like an entertainer's bus, and we would get in that. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And we would we would travel, and while we were traveling in, at places where we would just sit and relax and stuff, I would just sit and write my, my book, you know, write my book on the computer. So that's, I just had a lot of time on my hands, more time then, you know, to do things at that time, to start it, to where I felt like I could finish something. So, and it took me a couple of years to write it. I can imagine it would because you got to figure out which parts you really want to share, which parts you don't. So, interestingly enough, d does your um, did did your does your current husband support this effort? And did, was he like your first reader? Yes, he was. He my book was the first book he's ever read. <laughs> really, all the oh way through. Gosh. Yes. He's not a reader, but he uh, he definitely supported me. He's very yes. proud of my book. Um, I, I am I, I, I'm really surprised how well the book turned out. I'm just uh, at this point trying to get it marketed to where more people know about it, and that's that's the issue right there is getting people to know about it so they can order it. But yes, well, he you was very supportive. No, that's good, and that, and and you're certainly in a good place to do that. So Texas Authors is so supportive. Um, and so, so it took you two years to write it. Did you have mm -hmm. a group of beta readers that kind of helped you I had make a ghost it perfect? Writer. I had a ghostwriter, and oh. and I would send I sent her my complete manuscript, and she went through it and then took out the parts to make it a a book. And each chapter she would send me each chapter, and I would. Um, make the changes and send it back to her. And that's how we did it was basically chapter by chapter, but I had already written the whole manuscript and there was much more in the, in my manuscript than we could get into the book because already as it is, it's 405 pages long or 407 pages long. And I mean, I could have probably gone to 800 <laughs> pages had we left everything in there. Well, it's like an epic journey if you're talking about someone's life. So, you know, real quickly, what time period does this book cover from like what year to what year? Um, from the late 40s to oh. the present. Okay. So that, I mean, that certainly qualifies as a epic journey. 
So, <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> and know, I would have to call my brother at times because he's more of the keeper of the um, of the archives. And I would have to call him and say, and I didn't want him to know that I was writing a book. And I would call and say, hey, what was the name of the ship that we went over in Okinawa on? What was the name of the ship when we came back? And what were the name of our maids in Okinawa? And this, you know, and I would ask him specific things that I didn't quite remember because I was much younger. But um, and so finally, I just had to tell him, look, he said, why are you asking me all these questions? And I said, I'm writing a book and I just need to quantify, qualify things with you. So um, to make sure that I don't want to write it all wrong. I want it to be right. But, I, you know, it, but still be in a fiction. Yeah. Novel. And it's a perfect that's a perfect framework for us to take a pause to hear from our sponsors. And when we come back, Connie, I want to kind of go into a little bit more of the detail of how you segmented this book. So stick okay. around. Okay. Thank you. Embark on a literary journey beyond boundaries. Ready to revolutionize your author journey in the metaverse? Top 10 ways authors can embrace the metaverse and prepare for a metaverse bookstore. Is your guide to transforming authorship. Immerse in three-dimensional spaces. Host virtual book launches and signings. Use augmented reality for interactive book covers. Collaborate with metaverse bookstores. Create immersive reading experiences. And invest in virtual reality author platforms. Tokenize your creations with blockchain and NFTs, join metaverse writing communities, and stay adaptable to technological advances. Elevate your storytelling and thrive in the metaverse. Get your copy and unlock the future of authorship. Available in print, ebook, and audiobook. Each and every one of us has a mission in life. Mine is to help people laugh through the good times and the bad. My name is Charlotte Canyon, and I am an author, a speaker, and a host on Indie Beacon Radio. If you need me to speak in an event or autograph my book, you can contact me at charlotte at charlottecanyon.com. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Texas Authors Institute of History is not only a nonprofit museum for Texas authors, TAIH is also a place where authors can learn about publishing and book marketing. Check out our new magazine, The Texas Authors Magazine, available for free at texasauthors.institute today. Thank you for watching the Texas Authors Institute of History show with your hostess, Rox Berkey. Welcome back to Texas Authors TV. I'm Rox Berkey, co author of Enigma series, and I'm here today with Constance Lee Cooper. And we're talking about her book, One More Dance with Daddy, which is a wonderful fiction that to a degree exposes a little bit of her life story, which is fascinating to me. So, so Connie, you know, how did you decide to break up this book? Because it is a long, epic journey that you put together. Yes, it is. And um, what I did was I started... Um, from my early age and to, from like when we start, when, when my life began in Okinawa and I went through Okinawa and, um, and then when we left Okinawa up to that point to where when we moved back to San Antonio. And so I broke it up like that. So and I I uh, I would send my ghostwriter all my information over and I wanted her to put it together to make it, I mean, because my manuscript was just, you know, this, 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 it wasn't put together like a novel that anybody would want to read. So I had her put the, put the story together basically for me and then send me um, the proof. And then I would change things. We had a lot of changes, but um, it worked out. And so I went through segments of my life and that's how I did it. And with her uh, making the, the, the book a book, <laughs> should I say. No, I totally understand. And I know it started in Okinawa. And Okinawa at the middle middle of um, the last century um, is very different than the Okinawa today. Have oh. you been back there since this has occurred? No, I would love to. But it was, my memories of it are just gorgeous. And I just, I loved it. The white sands, the... Uh, my brother taking me up to the uh, the caves where the the tombs were of the, um, the Japanese, really, really where they were buried in tombs up there. And 
uh, he wasn't supposed to take me. <laughs> and so, cause I was quite young. I was probably about three at the time. And then I would tag along with my brother. Yeah. And so, okay. So um, your brother is an older brother. Yes. He's three and a half years older than me. So how does his memories of everything that you shared match or is it different? Um, no, it, it pretty well matches. Um, okay. Because that's why I said, I kind of confirmed with him certain things to make sure I had them right. And, um, but yeah, we, he, he pretty much matches everything that I've said. And it was hard for him to read it too, because his life was involved with my life. Well, exactly. So, so he has read it and, mm -hmm. um, is he supportive? Yes. Yes, he is supportive. Um, my whole family that has read it has been very supportive of it. Um, I, I think they didn't, especially, other than my brother, I don't think everybody knew everything that was in the book, you know, about my life. And so um, they didn't say too much to me. I don't know if they just wanted to, like, let it go past, just, okay, this is the way it is. I'm not going to bring up anything you know, anything with her. Um, everybody knew about my father leaving and never coming back. Those, that was a given. And um, so, no, it, everybody was very supportive uh, when they read it. They were very proud of me, very proud of me. And and I can see where everyone would be proud of you. I, I just met you and I'm proud of you just for being able Thank to you. do this. So, you know, you didn't realize your daddy was actually not your biological father, but he was a total father figure for you. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And a positive influence in your life. Yes. And someone who tried to make sure you were protected and shared. and But that's not how your life ended up, is it? No, it's not. Um, he, um, he also would intervene so much with my mother because we had, my mother was... Um, a little troubled, troublesome, should I say? I don't know. We we had a good life with her, but she um, I never knew when she was going to blow up, and and um, even around my friends and things like that. So that was another thing that was very hard for my brother to read for me to bring that stuff back up again. So, but yes, uh, it, I mean he he left when I was twenty one, and um, at the time I tried very hard to to find him. Had no had no idea where he was at all. And we had a letter. My mother had gotten a letter from him, um, I guess a few weeks after he left and just said that it was something that he had to do. And there's in my book, I've got reasons why I think he did it. And um, so, but we'll never know. You will never know. Uh, to this day, I don't even know if he's alive, which I don't think he is by now due to the age. But um, I, I, think he was killed a long time ago and that's not like him he wasn't in that he was he was not that type of person to where he hung around with a bunch of um um uh, scary people but i think that he had gotten i think he ended up getting involved with someone that didn't that had um reason to do away with him let's put it that way so, so here we are in 2024, mm -hmm. your book is published. It was just published in October of last year. Mm -hmm. So if the situation fit and your father, your daddy was able to know that you did this, mm -hmm. would, what would you want? Would you want him to reach out to you? Oh, and absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I would hope that he would, but um, all these years have gone by. I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. Do you do you feel in your heart of hearts that he would be proud of what you related in your book? Oh yes, yes. Because I had I had nothing but good to say about him, and uh, and I think if he read it, he would he would um, he would absolutely agree with the most of. Everything that I said in there is growing up. He so, so uh, if if there is any way that your father is alive and he happens to be listening to this, 
you certainly would love to have some kind of contact. Yes. Um, so the rest of your family has read it, but they've not really made positive or negative comments to you. Oh, they've said that, that it was good, but they didn't make any actual comments about the actual things that happened in my life. You know, they just didn't go into it with me. But okay. the, the book itself, the novel itself, they, they said was very good. I have friends that read it and said they couldn't put it down, that they wanted more at the end, but there's no more. I'm not going to, I'm done with that part. <laughs> well, that's it. You've, you've stated yeah. your state and you're going to move on with your life. Exactly. And so, you know, that's, that's also a very uh, important aspect of writing this kind of a book is you're like, I want to say it because it needs to be said. And now I'm done. I'm done. Um, Mm -hmm. So, so who are, what, what type of reader, what age group, what predisposition do you think needs to read your book that would get some value out of it? I would say anywhere from um, 18 on up. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Because there's so much, um, the teenage love that wants the, that want the marriages that want to get married early want to have children they see uh the consequences and things that i had gone through with it and and so that's a really important aspect is is it is one that serves several generations so honey i it's a good place to take a break again okay. and i want to i want to <laughs> i want to keep this thread going and when okay. we return I want to go ahead and talk about where people can see you, meet you, and ways to contact you. So stay tuned. Okay. okay. Immerse yourself in the world of audiobooks with Top 10 Reasons Authors Should Create Audiobooks. This guide unlocks key advantages from expanding your audience reach to ensuring accessibility for all. Dive into multitasking convenience, forge emotional connections, and break language barriers for global appeal. Narrate your own audiobook for a personal touch, explore genre adaptability, and tap into the profitable market. Stay ahead with technological trends and use audiobooks as powerful marketing tools, opening doors to interviews, podcasts, and exposure opportunities. Elevate your authorial journey with the sonic revolution, get your guide to audiobook success now. Available in print, ebook, or audiobook. Join Texas Creatives on June 1, 2024, in Seguin, Texas, for the Third Lone Star Festival. It's free to the public and a lot of fun for all types of families. Learn more about the event and who is attending and performing at Lone Star Festival. Fun. Texas Authors Institute of History is not only a nonprofit museum for Texas authors, TAIH is also a place where authors can learn about publishing and book marketing. Check out our new magazine, The Texas Authors Magazine, available for free at texasauthors.institute today. Thank you for watching the Texas Authors Institute of History show with your hostess, Rox Berkey. Welcome back to Texas Authors TV. And I'm here, I mean, with a rushed interview and discussion and fun time with Constant Lee Cooper and her book, which is amazing. It was released in October of 23 and it's called One More Dance with Daddy. And it really is kind of a, a journey through a life that had some really great highs and some incredible lows that, that Constance has revealed um, to help people. I mean, that's really the bottom line, right, Connie, is you're trying to help people and make them aware and and tell them that it's okay. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, the everything that I went through um, may not be uncommon for a lot of people, but when you put it all together and everything, you know, together in my life, I think it's it's a handful. And um, so I really, I think it. People will learn something from it. I, I'm hoping that they will. But again, I wrote it mainly for my uh, own therapy to get the, the the story out on me. And But I did it in a fictional way so that I didn't have to name names and wanted to make sure that that, that was um, 
that wouldn't come back on me for reasons. Yeah, for yeah. Now. Fair enough. And so did you feel a sense of closure when you actually published the book in October? Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It's just, I feel like it's just all off my chest. It's great. Okay. So that's, that's an important aspect is sometimes writing a story can actually, you know, put a line and a closure in what's going on mm -hmm. in, in your world, as well as giving right. advice or at least insights to people who read this book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, clearly by the reviews, you know, people think it's a well-written story. It's fiction. Mm -hmm. At least it's presented as fiction. Yes. So, yes. but people will want to talk to you. So are you, are you soliciting to book clubs and other groups to help bring you in to talk about this, to get them involved in? Is that one of the areas that you're focused on? Um, well, I've got a book club here in my neighborhood that I've been thinking about uh, entering the book into them or asking them to read it and then uh, give me feedback on it. I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm just um, not sure how that works. And I guess I just have to make that phone call to find out how they would want it. Um, do I purchase a book for every one of them? Uh, you know, that type of thing. But then the other thing is, is that um, I'm uh, working on getting it into Barnes and Noble, which I will, I think that would be um, a great enhancement for me and doing a, a book signing at that time uh, when it gets into Barnes and Noble. But okay, other so, than that, go ahead. No, Barnes and Noble, they can certainly get your book because you're on Ingram Spark. Yes. So it's a matter of how you yes. convince the local store that you're approaching that, that you would make a good investment for them. Mm -hmm. So, yes. so, and that brings up, where can people find you on social media, Connie? Well, I have a Facebook page. Um, it, it's not an author's page. I should probably make an author's page, but um, it's my Facebook page and it's under Connie Cooper. And they can go on there and um, they can see that um, that I've written the book. And um, But that's about as far. I, I've got it on TikTok, which hasn't been very well and then on um the um um oh what's the other one um instagram probably instagram <laughs> thank you no problem so okay so we only have a couple minutes left so really quickly what do you have a website no i don't i don't okay. I, sorry no, about no that problem. i just no 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 don't be sorry there's no sorry in here so people can find you on your author page on amazon Mm -hmm. And you're listed as Constance Lee Cooper. No, they find me as Connie Cooper on Facebook. Connie Cooper on Facebook. I absolutely love it. Connie, <laughs> I think that you have a, a great step into, into this book and into your future. And Thank you. You're delightful. I look forward to finding out thank in six you. months how well you've done. Oh, uh, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. I really appreciate it. It's uh, just you know, anything that I can do to get the book out and get people to read it. And uh, this is a wonderful uh, way to do it. So I thank you so much for allowing me or picking me to come in on your, on your stories or on your, on your YouTube. So thank you very much, Connie Cooper, better known as Constance Lee. Welcome to the Texas Authors Institute TV show produced by Beyond Bourgeois for the Texas Authors Institute of History Incorporated, copyright 2024. If you would like to become a sponsor of our show and help us produce great content, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show as a Texas author, please email us at texasauthors at outlook.com for more information. Music is Frolic of Words, created for Texas Authors Institute by Happy.